At NAB last month, Rode announced a whole bunch of new products and firmware updates for existing products. Out of all the announcements, the one I was most excited for is the firmware updates for the Rode Wireless Go 2. I've been using the Rode Wireless Go 2s for over two years now, and the feature I'm most excited about is the ability to transfer WAV files directly from the device to your computer, just like you would with any other external hard drive, rather than having to use the Rode Central app like we've had to previously. There's some other new features, including the ability to start and stop recording using the button on the Rode transmitter itself, as well as support for more camera profiles. These are both features that a lot of people have been asking for, but in this video, we're just gonna focus on the file transfer functionality introduced in the new firmware. Before we continue, I just want to point out how amazing it is that a product I bought over two years ago is still getting great new functionality introduced in firmware updates. It would be so easy for Rode to just launch this as a Rode Wireless Go 3 with these new features unlocked with firmware, but instead everybody who's got a Rode Wireless Go 2 gets access to this new functionality for free just by updating that firmware. So I just want to point out how cool that is. If it seems like I care way too much about getting my WAV files directly off the device rather than having to use Rode Central, I'll tell you why I care so much. Firstly, I can copy off all my recordings at once rather than having to use Rode Central where you export one audio clip at a time. As the audio recordings are in 30 minute chunks, if I do a two hour recording with two speakers, that means I have eight files that I have to manually export one at a time using Rode Central. When I'm using Windows Explorer or the Mac Finder, instead I can just copy all eight files onto my machine and all in one go without having to babysit the whole process. This also means I can use my typical media management tools like Hedge or any custom scripts I've written that copy files off memory cards to just get all the files off and it can be part of my normal process. I don't need to do extra steps to jump into this app just because I'm using a Rode Wireless Go. This new firmware hasn't actually been released yet. It's still in beta, which means the developers are still working on it, testing it and ironing out the final bugs. So if you're wanting to use this for professional work or a mission critical job, I'd suggest definitely not updating the firmware until the final release has happened. And even then I'd suggest maybe waiting a month just to wait to see See if other people have any problems with it. As for me, I always record a second source of audio because I'm paranoid about losing audio. So I'm prepared to take this risk because I've got shotgun mics and other audio recorders running whenever I'm recording a scene. So if these do fail, I've still got a separate audio source that I can use to get me out of trouble. If you're prepared to take the risk, the next step would be exporting any audio recordings that are currently on the transmitters before we do this firmware update, just in case the update wipes the audio recordings or corrupts them in some way. To get the update, we'll just go to the Rode Wireless Go 2 website. From here, you can see the beta firmware link, which we will click and then download it for the appropriate platform. From here, we'll run through the installer for the beta. Now that that's installed, we'll launch the new version of Rode Central. Now you can plug in all of your devices at once to update them, but I'm old fashioned, so I'm gonna update them one at a time. You need to make sure each device is charged to at least 20% battery capacity, otherwise Rode Central won't let you do the update. I'd also recommend that if you are running this beta firmware, once the final release happens, definitely update to that as soon as you can, just because the final release is a lot more tested and a lot more stable and less likely to have bugs than this beta firmware. You'll notice if you're running a beta version of Rode Central, it'll very promptly display the version number in the bottom left corner, just to remind you that this is a beta version and might have some bugs. Well, that's embarrassing. This couldn't update. I tried to update the receiver, but Rode Central said the update process failed. However, once I reconnected the receiver, it looks like it is running the latest version, so we'll have to see how we go. Next, we'll update each of the transmitters after making sure there's no audio recordings on there that we need that we haven't already pulled off the device. A cool feature when updating the transmitter is it'll actually give you an option to either update the firmware or back up all the audio files and then update the firmware. I'd suggest not taking advantage of this and transferring all your audio files off first. Just that way you can make sure all the audio recordings are working fine and listen back to them so you know everything's fine before you wipe this rather than doing this and taking the risk that the backup does work before it wipes the whole device. As expected, when you go to update the firmware, it does warn that it will wipe all audio recordings on your device. Okay, Rode Central just crashed. This is all part of the beta process, so let's hope I haven't bricked any of my devices. It looks like we're now running the latest firmware, and now we'll update my second transmitter. After updating the second transmitter, I noticed Rode Central didn't crash this time. I've also noticed that the Rode Wireless Go is appearing as a drive on my Mac, so I can click on that, and there's no files there currently. So now we're gonna do a quick test just to make sure each of these transmitters work. So I'm gonna pull off audio recordings from each transmitter and confirm that the audio is coming through perfectly. So next time I'm on a proper job, I know that it's gonna work fine. If you're wondering why I got these weird love heart stickers on there, that's just because I asked my wife to get me two stickers so that way I could uniquely identify each device. So when I'm recording, I know which device it's on and I didn't tell her what stickers I wanted. So I ended up with two love hearts. So now we'll check if we can pull the audio off these devices without having to use Rode Central. So it's not a good start. The first transmitter isn't showing up in Finder. After further testing, it looks like you need to have Rode Central running just to make sure these devices appear as drives in Finder. 
It looks like when I updated the first transmitter, it turned off the always record setting. So the second transmitter has the recording of the video I just shot, but the first one just has automatic recordings turned off. I've now turned that on, but it's definitely something to check once you do a firmware update, especially with beta software. But I'd suggest whenever you do any software update to just check that you haven't lost or reset any of your settings. Now that I've turned automatic recordings back on, I can see that it is recording and I can transfer the files off that fine. After testing out this new firmware more, it's definitely a nice quality of life improvement. I think you can definitely live without it, but it's really nice being able to open Rode Central and minimize it, and then just put all my memory cards and these Rode Wireless Go's into my machine and just transfer all the files off using Windows Explorer or the Mac Finder without having to actually use any third-party software, even though Rode Central is running in the background. Overall, I think this is a great firmware update. I've noticed that the audio recordings on the devices themselves when I pull the files off are higher quality than what's recorded by the camera. I think you lose a little bit of quality as it's doing wireless transferring between the transmitter and the receiver. So the recordings going into the camera will never be as good as the raw recordings on the device itself. And so anything that makes it easier to get those recordings off the device onto your computer is a net win in my opinion. Hopefully Rode iron out the final bugs and release this firmware update soon. If you have any questions or feedback, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise I'll catch you in the next video.